Hello, you are listening to English edition of Coroffee podcast dedicated to cannabis growing and another interesting information about cannabis. My name is Josef Krejčík and I'm publishing books and articles on this topic for more than 12 years. I'm wishing you a pleasant listening. Hello, I'm uh, on a visit in Austria and now I'm sitting here with Julian, uh, owner of uh, company Horty One, who is producing also LEDs for cannabis growing and yeah, hello Julian, how are you doing? Hello Jose, it's a pleasure <laughs> to meet you. Yeah, it's a pleasure for me too. Uh, Julian, uh, can you introduce uh, your company a little bit, what you mm -hmm. are doing and what you are focusing on? Mm -hmm. um, and as you said, it, the company is called Horty One for Horticulture One, <laughs> <laughs> as you can imagine. Uh, we do LED grow lights, so we, we, we do not just uh, import them, we De uh, develop, design them and finally assemble them here in Austria. Mm -hmm. um, we have a focus on a, on, a, on a value chain, which means we try to use as many local components as we can. Mm -hmm. We only use good components. Um, it's Austrian-based company. We are now in the fourth year. Mm -hmm. So I started actually in parallel with Corona. So now we are into uh, yeah. year number four. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually the third generation of our units. Mm -hmm. So the first generation was like a small batch where we then made small changes to version two. Mm -hmm. And here we are sitting here with, uh, this is the Horty One 600, mm -hmm. the third generation of our modules. Yeah. Meanwhile, we have two modules, the Horty One 420 and this one, the Horty One 600 mm -hmm. and two different kind of dimmers okay. at the moment. Okay, uh, I see the light is very light yes it's, uh, yeah not too much material on that uh, is it uh, okay with heat um yeah i mean what we use is uh, the technology is often described as a quantum board uh -huh. um, which is actually a trademark from an american company uh -huh. but the principle of using mid power leds uh -huh. and um the, the mid power leds they're actually so efficient that I don't want to say no heating or no heat sink is required, but the aluminium PCB is enough as a heat sink. Mm -hmm, so the mm -hmm. PCB itself is working as a heat sink, mm -hmm. which is enough for this kind of LED. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about lifespan of this uh, um, of uh, chips on this thin? Light because uh, how much it weighs? It's so uh, it's a kilo. Um, I don't I don't kilo. know the weight of the light itself out of my mind because that's actually only the LED panel with mm -hmm. an external driver. Yeah. So yeah. because it's not top top mounted, it's external, so you can keep it external of your grow tent, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. And for sure, it does not add to the to the <coughs> to the weight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, your question is the lifespan. The lifespan of the LED in the way we use it is fifty thousand hours mm -hmm. for an LM90. LM90 stands for life maintenance 90, which means after 50,000 hours, the chips have still 90% um, of its efficiency. Okay. And 50,000 hours, if you calculate it with 24 hours a day, we talk about 5.7 years. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, for sure, usually grow cycles are 12 and 18 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, for sure, depending on the cycles, the lifespan is actually even getting longer. Okay, okay, cool. I see that uh, uh, chips are not... Uh, protect it mm -hmm. uh, so is it if I spray it coincidentally with some water or if I operate it with high, in high humidity environment mm -hmm. in, in a grow tent, is it safe or? I mean, first of all, for sure, it is definitely designed <coughs> to work with a high humidity as you can mm -hmm. have it in a grow tent, especially, you know, with young, uh, young plants, cuttings, uh -huh. they uh -huh. usually have high humidity. Mm -hmm. Also using a humidifier is not a problem. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to spraying, as you mentioned, we actually, for sure, we, we say you should not do it, especially when the, uh, the light is running. Yes. But but um, with, it op with this kind of technology and without any protection, we decided to use a kind of LED which has one of the highest protection against humidity mm -hmm. and chemicals. So that's why it will definitely not break your unit. Mm -hmm. So for, for sure, we do not recommend it, but mm -hmm. it can happen and that's why it will not destroy your unit. Mm -hmm. And the high humidity, which you can have in a grow room, is mm -hmm. definitely not a problem. Yeah. It's yeah. designed for that purpose. Good. And okay, you know, Sometimes uh, when you operate in a grow room, you can damage something. What if, what if I, let's say, take one uh, chip out or mm -hmm. I break one? Uh, does it 
uh, have a, an influence on other uh, LEDs as well? Or? I mean, generally it is like this. If uh, really, if just one LED is broken, this one LED will not work and the rest of the light will work normally. Mm -hmm. It will even compensate the loss of this little chip. For sure, this is only when one chip is broken, mm -hmm. but, but that's also because of the design. Our mm -hmm. previous models, uh, it affected up to three LEDs, okay. but here we adapted and improved the PCB layout a bit, so in, in this case it should only affect one. Mm -hmm. Expect if uh, a red one is broken, it can affect an entire yes. block. Yes. So that yeah. also in case of the issue would be a shortcut, it uh -huh. can also affect uh -huh. more, but in generally only the LED which is broken does not work and it does not affect more LEDs. Yeah, cool. Uh, this is like a full spectrum LED, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We use two types of uh, LED chips. Okay. Um, one is the, the CL3030C. Mm -hmm. So the C is this high-end platform with the high resistance against chemicals mm -hmm. and humidity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is a full spectrum already or near to full spectrum or broadband spectrum, which emits a wide light. Uh -huh. And we added the high power chip from Osram, 660 nanometer, you know, that's uh -huh. the peak uh -huh. at 660, a red, uh, a red chip additionally. Okay. So that's why we have a peak in the in the red light in the spectrum, which is yeah. mainly important for flowering. Yeah, yeah. So it means that all the... <laughs> Uh, chips I see are yellow, uh, are the same color? Or? They are all the same color, yes. It's, in this case it's a 4000 Kelvin chip. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Because on the same, the same chip you get in 3000, 4000, 5000 and so on. Mm -hmm. This time we use the 4000 in combination with the red one. Mm -hmm. We end up with uh, about 3800. So it's neutral white. Yeah, yeah. cool. For cool. the perception. Cool. So you said you, uh, I can dim this light as well. So I see there are like uh, two kinds of dimmer. Mm -hmm. this, is, this, is, so this, this is this is the this is driver. the LED driver. Okay. And with a plug and play uh, solution for sure, where you can also replace with a standard wire. Mm -hmm. Here connected to the lamp, mm -hmm. and here to the dimmer. Yes. Um, we have two different model. Mm -hmm. um, this is our low cost dimmer which okay. is simply uh, a, a knob dimming mm -hmm. uh, without any steps and with a power off function, mm -hmm. um, which is designed low cost and you need one dimmer for one unit. Yes, yes. This dimmer works with the small unit and the big one and mm -hmm. also with our previous model. Yeah, cool. Then what we also have is uh, the, the Bluetooth dimmer. Okay. Actually, knob and Bluetooth dimmer. Mm -hmm. here, here it's not stepless in the knob dimming, it has dedicated steps. Okay. Um, the, but the precision on these steps are actually more accurate than with this one. Yeah, yeah. The last modus would be if you turn the knob to wireless, uh -huh. you can also connect a dimmer to your smartphone via Bluetooth. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then you can make stepless dimming, mm -hmm. power off for sure. You can also include a timer with a sunrise and a sunset function. Okay, okay. And uh, it can supply up to three LEDs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the cost is for sure a little bit higher and mm -hmm. our system is modular. As you see, we have here one panel, mm -hmm. but depending on how big your area and the intensity you want, you use usually more, more than one module. Yeah. And that's why we said up to three uh, LEDs can be yeah. dimmed with one dimmer. Yeah. Good, and you have some application uh, through which I... Uh, exactly, yeah. it's an open application, um, it's also in the manual, you can download it, it's free. Uh, okay. Uh, for sure, it's free. Um, that's an open platform, and uh -huh. in the normal mode, the dimmer is not connected to the internet. Yes. It is possible with an additional device to connect it to the internet, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you can remotely control it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can also buy, for example, sensors on the same base, Mm -hmm. And then the, you can, for example, dim your light based on a sensor value. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's, cool. it's a little bit future, it's something we do not offer from our side yet. Mm -hmm. But because it's an open platform, there are actually a lot of compatible devices on the market out yeah, there. Yeah, so I can then put, uh, let's say, sensor of uh, light intensity. Mm, you, you can make any kind of smart applications. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. One okay. example, I tried something at home um, in winter. Mm -hmm. No, I do not get always a lot of sun in winter. Okay. So I was growing a little bit salad yeah. on the yeah. bench. Then, and then I put a light sensor and when the sun, sun was coming and adding to the light sensor, then the, the light was dimming down. Okay. And when the sun disappeared, yeah. the yeah. light was dimming 
the yeah, back yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, and for yeah. sure, you can make any kind of logic, logic. Yeah, it's like yeah. a smart garden. Yeah, it's cool. It's but as cool. I said, that's a little bit the future. It needs optional features, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also like, you know, some people love it, some mm -hmm. people don't want it. Yeah, it's yeah. but it's also, it could be good, for example, if you prepare your seedlings for summer or spring season, so you can use in a small greenhouse or some place where you can sprout your seeds mm -hmm. you can use additional light during the end of cold winter so it's it's also a nice uh, solution you have uh, this panel is 600 mm -hmm. watts right uh, no, no it's called oh. horty one 600 okay, um, because not... we have 600 leds yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, okay and in this case the ppf so the uh -huh. photosynthetic photon flux mm -hmm. is also 600 micromole per second yeah 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 okay this unit is actually 220 watt 220 okay S and a very common as I, as mentioned before it's a modular system which means you use the amount of modules depending on your size mm -hmm. or the intensity you want mm -hmm. as an oh. example 120 by 120 is a very common size for a grow tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our standard application would be two. Okay. So you have 440 watt. Mm -hmm. um, and if you wanna wanna grow with higher intensity, or maybe you wanna use artificial CO2, you for sure can also use a third module. Yes, yes. Okay. Which is something you know. Some people say, oh, it's better to have one lamp. Mm -hmm. I would say it has all has advantages and disadvantages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One advantage I see is you can always upgrade and downgrade. Mm -hmm, you can say mm -hmm. I start with two and add a third light yeah, without yeah. replacing the entire setup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can technically use it as dimming. Mm -hmm. For example, if you use three lights, you use only two in vegetative phase and the mm -hmm. third one in uh, in flowering. Yeah, yeah. And what I also see is, you know, in case of you have a, a power failure or a failure of a unit, mm -hmm. you do not lose the entire 600 what you use mon yes, module. Yes, yes, you yes. can replace the light. Mm -hmm. And it gives you as uh, advantages, for example, the three units, mm -hmm. which is like the high power setup in 120, mm -hmm. but in 150 by 150, it would be our standard setup. Yes, yes. So you can also take the same solution from your 120, move it to a 150, and start mm -hmm. the same process again. If you yeah. say, ah, I need more light, I add a fourth, fourth module. If I use uh, two light into 1.2 by 1.2 mm -hmm. uh, and put it on 100% uh, power, mm -hmm. how, how much uh, PPFD will I get? Man, here I recommend actually, yeah, uh, okay. uh, here I recommend our booklet. Uh -huh. uh, and also on the website, there's, uh -huh. there are all the information because this is this is the setup you're asking. 120 by 120 with two units. Okay. And here you see the light intensity depending on the dimming mm. level. In this case, you said 100% uh -huh. and the distance. And the distance. Okay. You know, the PPF, so the total output would be 1,200 micromole uh -huh, uh -huh. per second when you use two units. Okay. The PPFD value at the surface. It depends on the distance okay, also yeah, as well. Yeah, of course, of course. So yeah, so we know what is PPF. It's at the uh, moment. The, the other one is called yeah, PPFD. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, photosynthetic course, photon flux density. Yeah, yeah. Which is the yeah. value in one point. Yeah. And here we have the values, including a standard recommendation yeah. about which phase and which cool. in intensity you get. Because for me, it's also like some people want to focus on saving energy, yeah, uh, yeah, grow with right. a little bit of lower PPFD. Some people say, I want to focus on a high yield, high power, mm. or maybe use artificial CO2. Mm. Then mm. for sure, that's why you use higher intensities yeah, yeah. in the same phase. Yeah. And it also depends always a little bit on the strain you use huh, on the tent. Huh, huh. But here we give some standard recommendations. Yeah, yeah. So I see here that if I use two of them in 1.2 one by 1.2, in 40 centimeters distance, I will get 633 it's PPFD. The, it's the average. Yeah, so yeah. you will have higher numbers and you will at some place have lower numbers. Yeah. So it's a quite uniform. Mm -hmm. With mm -hmm. uh, three mm -hmm. units, it's extremely, the uniformity is actually really, really good. With mm -hmm. two units, it's also absolutely good. Mm -hmm. And then you are, actually you are a little bit above. Yeah, above yeah. this. But you know, it's also important to do, have it quite uniform because it doesn't help you have in the middle 1,000 <laughs> while you have 200 or yes, a few yes, of course, hundred of course. Uh, in the corner. Of course, and if I use three of them, I will re, uh, reach are above, above 900. 900 yeah. So it's really, yeah. And here is a recommendation for uh, one The, the one first one meter. is, for example, 60 by 120. It's yeah, yeah, one yeah. of the applications. It's not uh -huh. the most common tent size, yeah, but yeah. I see it coming more and more. 
Uh -huh. And that's one of the applications where you need exactly one unit. Yes. One unit but I see enough. for one square meter, what is very common, if I use two of them, I will uh, reach more than 900 ppfd. Yes. So it's, it's really, a, really it's nice. It's a strong setup for yeah, it's one strong, square meter, that's a, for it's sure. It's a strong setup. You have also uh, a weaker one, like um, four, a 420. I mean, we have, a, we have a smaller one. We have the smaller yeah, unit, yeah, yeah. the Horty 1420. Yeah. Again, because the 420 LEDs, mm -hmm. um, it's a 150 watt unit. It has 51 centimeter. It's exactly the same design, the same layout, uh -huh. uh, but it's shorter and for sure less powerful. Uh -huh. Only 150 watt. It would be for 60 by 60 or 80 by 80 centimeter. Yeah. Okay. Or for sure because of the the modular solution. For example, recently we used four units in 180 by 90, which is also quite uncommon. Mm -hmm. set up but mm -hmm. here it turned out that four units of the small yeah. one also illuminated it perfectly yeah okay so there are uh, two types of uh, horty one mm -hmm. 600 and 420 mm -hmm. what is nice number 420 means also 420 uh, chips on that exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly cool cool it sounds uh, it sounds really good uh, what is the uh, recommended retail price at the moment? Do you know that? Or? I mean, this unit is uh, at around 320 euro. 320 euro. Including euros. tax. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. So for 600, I can have uh, like a strong light. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, what we strong do is, you know, or... the concept of 41 is actually we use good components. That's yeah, why we have yeah. actually uh, good efficiency values. Mm -hmm. We have 2.9 mm -hmm. micromole per joule. We have a good lifespan mm -hmm. and good efficiency good resistance, mm -hmm. as you mentioned before, but combined with an extremely simple concept. Yeah, so yeah. As you see, we really, I always say as an engineer, it is as an engineering masterpiece because it does not have a lot of million features and mm -hmm. gadgets you don't need. It's reduced to the absolute minimum. Yeah, yeah. But it's its purpose, it should definitely fulfill its purpose, uh -huh. which means growing nice and healthy plants. Yeah, good, good. Uh, you mentioned something about uh, uh, about material which is using uh, for chips making, mm -hmm. that, that there is some reflection material um, which uh, can oxidize. Uh, because I know you have uh, something, some information on your blog mm -hmm. on horty1.com. Mm -hmm. It's uh, yeah, yeah. So there is lots of uh, useful in information on uh, Julian's blog, but uh, one is. Uh, like uh, very interesting for me. So te tell us about the material which uh, is uh, more, uh, uh, which is better for 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 using in in chips. Mm -hmm. so I mean, I mean that's actually a question which c uh, comes very often. Especially a lot of people are coming. Why do you use? We use the CL chips. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are coming saying there's CL, there's Samsung, Samsung. As a general information, there are a few LED manufacturers mm -hmm. and all of them produce different classes of LED. Yeah. So you find a high performance, high, higher cost LED from Samsung and a lower cost, lower efficiency, lower quality from Samsung and the same for Seol. Uh -huh. So what we and did this, is... Uh, and these chips have uh, the same name? So this uh, the same type? No, or? the same name usually not. Uh -huh. But they have the same platform. For example, our platform, which is the CO3030C, mm -hmm. 3030 is also the platform, okay. which is the same platform as, for example, the Samsung LM301. Mm -hmm. um, so I could immediately replace my LED with the Samsung LM301. I'm mentioning this chip because only the Samsung LM301, I think the B or the H, uh -huh. and the CO3030C where some time ago the only chip on the market would have this tit titanium oxide uh, reflector. Mm -hmm. So usually usually on the back side of the LED chip there is a reflector mm -hmm. material. Okay. Very common is silver. That you use silver and only these two types use titanium oxide okay. which should avoid corrosion with chemicals. Mm -hmm. In especially you know, there is something called the, uh, the VOCs, which stands for Volatile Organic Compounds. Okay. Which is one of the big, big enemies of all LEDs. Mm -hmm. uh, those are chemicals um, which you, especially in horticulture applications, you almost, at least in low doses, you always have it in your application. Mm -hmm. So what we here did is, uh, we made a test 
first we get lab tests in advance, but we've also wanted to see it from our side in a practical test, mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. what you find on my homepage. Mm -hmm. We tested this with sulfur. Sulfur mm -hmm. is uh, one, or one very aggressive volatile organic compound which attacks the LED, mm -hmm. and especially the silver reflector on the background. Mm -hmm. And then you get a corrosion, and the silver turns black, Yes. And you know, a reflector, a black surface does not reflect, it does yeah, absorb yeah, yeah, yeah. light and generate heat, yes, generates yes. heat. Mm -hmm. So we tested with this hot box, box sulfurizer uh -huh. in a very high intensity, eight hours a day while lights on. So that's not the application how you should do it. Mm -hmm. This was only to test our LED. Mm -hmm. um, we have to say, it was, we have to be fair, all LEDs survived, mm -hmm. which is already a good sign yeah, like for yeah. both the quality of both chips. Mm -hmm. But if, um, if you look at the, at the web page with the pictures, you see that the other chips, they are really black. You can see in all chips that you see a black, you see a, a black dot inside the chip already. Yeah, and that's so. exactly what happened, that is the, the, the reflector oxidated, or uh, corrosion turned black, and you lost about 20 to 30 percent of the yeah. light. So, and they did so chips with silver got black. Uh, funnily, the Samsung chip, which is supposed to have a titanium oxide reflector as well. Mm -hmm. We tested these two models because those two are the one on the market who have this mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. That's why I think that's why they both survived, but this chip performed much, much better actually. Yeah, okay, so this chip with uh, titanium <laughs> oxide uh, did not get black. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah okay. This and if, if you don't have this, this uh, titanium mm -hmm. oxide, the chance that they get damaged quicker is significantly higher mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and okay when uh, in my setting in grow room where where the sulf sulfur is come from or sulfur is used i mean also i mean sulfur in some applications it is used to uh -huh. uh, avoid fungus from germination okay uh, not in every country and in, in every application it is even legal mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes it's used in the end as a disinfection process mm -hmm. but that's why i mentioned it we used the sulfur because it was easy for us to make the test yes yes but okay. in general it is for all these VOCs, volatile organic compounds. Uh -huh, That's uh -huh. why I say what we did is we made a high intensity in a short period mm -hmm. to simulate a long exposure to these chemicals. Yes, but okay. you always have at least a small, a small amount of them you always have in your application. Okay. That's why it is so relevant. Yeah, okay, okay. Can you name some other uh, compounds which can, you know... In general, every chemical compound yeah, and okay. every mineral you have from the nutrient they are all not good for led mm -hmm. in general yeah okay okay so even in the air there are some chemicals mostly yeah at yeah, least in yeah. small in small yeah, portions yeah. yeah okay so definitely if, uh, we can say uh, we can say that chips with uh, titanium oxide are uh, have long longer lifespan and are let's say protected Uh, prote protected against oxidization. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. That's the thing. It's good to know because uh, mostly we are using lights and not uh, think uh, too much about the technical background of uh, every chip. Uh, we are thinking about light quality, about uh, light spectrum and about lifespan, but yeah, we don't think too much what is inside, uh, inside the Uh, the chips, yes. Yeah? So now we know a little bit more uh, about it. Uh, Light, what do you have here? Something else? It's ah. a, that's a <laughs> more or less a marketing goodie. Yeah, so yeah, nothing okay. we develop by ourselves, and okay. you can keep this. Yeah, okay. this is my Perfect. gift to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> How do you want this? Yeah, 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 I will use it. It's, <laughs> you know, this part of growing is something I don't like too much to make <laughs> the final trim. Yeah, and maybe, maybe now you like it a little yeah, bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I will like it a little bit more. I will check. I noticed some uh, noticed some uh, some questions here. So, yeah, there is a one more topic we didn't open. Mm -hmm. What do you think about UV light? Because it's like hot topic now. Lots of growers are talking about. Mm -hmm. Lots of manufacturers manufacturers uh, saying that they have UV light in their light. So. There are two things in my point, uh, from my point of view. One thing is that it's somehow proved, uh, proven that uh, UV can increase uh, cannabinoid production or secondary metabolites uh, in general. 
And uh, what do you think about it? Are you using it in your, in your lights or what's... I mean, we are not using it in this light. Okay. And I personally have to say, at least with the current state of the art technique, mm -hmm. I do not want to add it in the light. Mm -hmm. um, if I would use UV, I want to have it separately. Mm -hmm. Because, first of all, the efficiency of UV chips is also yeah. very, very yeah. different. The lifespan is different. As soon as you mix it, uh, you may re reduce even your, the lifespan of your product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why I would love to have it separately. Mm -hmm. But I want to give some information about UV. We only talk about UV, mm -hmm. but there's, you know, there's UVA, there's UVB and UVC. Yeah, yeah. And not just like this. I have seen a, a couple of products, without mentioning any names, which say we have UV. But they actually have, for example, 405 nanometer, which is blue light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you know, in the beginning of the LED times, it was always said that LED can increase your terpene or cannabinoid level mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. up to 20, 25. There are mm -hmm. different numbers percent. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally would say it is already because of the higher portion of blue light we are using mm -hmm. inside. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we also have a. I made a little blog post about uh, blog post about this topic mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm where we mainly summarize the existing theoretical knowledge mm -hmm. scientists created. Um, but uh, there, were, there were a few key takeaways. My first key takeaway is uh, what UV do you have and is it even UV? Mm -hmm. as some, really, as some, they have blue light and claim it is UV. Okay. The next thing is, yeah, how much difference is there between UVA and blue light? Mm -hmm. and UVB, for example. Yeah, I think UVC yeah. we can cut off. UVC is highly harmful and only for disinfection. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, not, and also not so efficient. It's from not the in, the na uh, in the nature. It's yeah. uh, in, in general, I still say uh, in the moment it's a little bit tough to say um, if UVB is the very interesting part mm -hmm. for your secondary mm -hmm. me metabolism. Because based on the research, you can say UVA and blue light has same or at least very, very similar effects. It mm -hmm, triggers the mm -hmm. same system. Mm -hmm. But you know, in general, it works like that, that UV is harmful radiation. Mm -hmm. It is considered harmful radiation uh, also for us humans. Yes. Uh, so for, at this point, we have to have uh, security levels. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to take care about security. Mm -hmm. Also not look into the light yeah, because yeah, it's definitely yeah. harmful. But that's, the, that's at least in the theory, the trick behind. You mm -hmm. know, harmful radiation kind of destroys part of the cells or the genetic of the plants, the DNA of the plants, mm -hmm. and it has a repair mechanism. Mm -hmm. And in order to repair itself, it can increase trichome production and cannabinoid levels. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, uh, you know, in the nature, hairs, and trichome is actually just a, a name for hair, small mm -hmm. hairs, mm -hmm. hairs are a way to protect from sunlight or from UV yeah, radiation. Yeah, yeah. So the same happens in the plants, the trichomes are in, in uh, uh, increased. Yeah, yeah. But something which is also interesting, the theoretical research says something clear. Um, because some people say you get higher yield and higher content. Mm -hmm. um, but actually it works like this, that the meta, meta the meta mechanism mm -hmm, mm -hmm. behind, which is the, like the UVC receptor, which is called, not the UV, UV, uh, UVR8 receptor, is it is uh -huh. called, uh -huh. which is triggered partially by UVB and UVA. Mm -hmm. um, but when these systems are triggered, the plant stops to grow and it stops, uh, uh, it stops the cells. So actually the mechanism is I stop growing, I, I focus my energy on protection. Yes, yes. So if somebody tells you you will have a higher yield and higher content, I would say be careful with this statement mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the mechanism tells the plant stop growing, focus on protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I need to say that most of the research is related to, to Arabidopsis. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I have to say, for especially for cannabis, there still needs to be a lot of, yeah, lot yeah. of research yeah. to be done to have clear applications. Yes, yes, yes. some researches have, have been done already. Absolutely, on UV, absolutely. So yeah, it's not something uh, like a really, really new. But yeah, it's uh, definitely interesting to talk about it. Uh, I think uh, the, in the past there were lots of uh, lights where you can change uh, change li the light, uh, light spectrum mm -hmm. with switching some LEDs on or off. For example, there were like uh, uh, red boosters mm -hmm. where you uh, get in flowering uh, phase that you switch on extra uh, extra red. Mm -hmm. Maybe 
it could be also good to have uh, some UVs if it will be proven that it really works that uh, this uh, UVs uh, don't have to be uh, switched on all the time but you can switch it uh, only in uh, flowering stage or later mm -hmm. flower flowering stage and you will not need extra uh, extra bars with LEDs, so is it good or bad idea? Um, I mean, it's maybe a matter of taste. I, I would, uh, as I said before, I in the moment don't, would not like to add UV in mm -hmm. my light because uh, especially the lifespan and efficiency of these LEDs is different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as you, if you correctly said already, um, maybe if you have a switch or a mm -hmm. controller, mm -hmm. I mean, for sure, I, I do not deny the fact that maybe adding UV in some certain phases is good. But do you definitely have to control it. If you always yes, use the yes, UV, yes. you maybe don't get good results and you reduce your lifetime. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I personally say, still say in the moment, I would love to have it separately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just to have this control mechanism better and it does not go together with my mm, product mm, mm. and reduces the lifespan. Yeah, yeah. But you know, in the beginning, it's also, I remember, in, especially in the times before LED, and it, it swapped over to the LED along, uh, for a long time that the people said, no, I, I, in, the, in the vegetative phase, I want more blue light or only blue light. And in flowering phase, only red one. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit from the history. You know, yes, HPS, yes, for example, right. has a very good, quite good red spectrum, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. almost no blue light. Mm -hmm. So what people did, they used, for example, MH, um, our different te technology, mm -hmm. uh, metal halide in vegetative phase because mm -hmm. it has the good blue light yeah, and then yeah. they switch to, to HPS. Yes. I personally, would not suggest this because even for LED, because even a good example is I would not want to power off the blue light in flowering phase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is said to be more important for veg, mm -hmm. but blue light is also, first of all, it's the one which, where we said, it's probably one reason for the, for the higher cannabinoids, mm -hmm. because blue light still has same effects than UV. Mm -hmm. And also other things like pigments, like anthocyanin, which is responsible for some colors. Mm -hmm. um, are related to the blue light. So mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. this is one of the main reasons that we have this powerful full spectrum. Mm -hmm. It's the reason why a good LED, mm -hmm. not all LED are the same, mm -hmm. very important, yeah, yeah. that we have better results yeah. and we can talk about better light quality yeah. compared yeah. to the older technologies. Yes, and also with full spectrum, you can better see your plants. So if there are That's for sure. problems That's on your for plants, sure. you can see it. If you remember the red and blue uh, LEDs, it was very hard to see something there. It was like everything was uh, in violet. You know? Absolutely, so yeah. The violet light. You didn't light, see yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Julian, I think we covered uh, uh, interesting topics. Uh, thank you for presentation of your light. I'm happy that uh, my way here was. Uh, so yeah, thank you for good being here. You can meet cousin. here as well. And yeah. I think we will meet on some trade show in the close future. I wish you good luck. Yeah, thank you and very much. Yeah, we will see each other soon. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, so Jose. And let me give you, you know, you got already your nice, yeah, your nice yeah, cutters, yeah, yeah. but let me also give you a nice okay, t-shirt. perfect. So <laughs> now I can cut the grass in a better t-shirt. So maybe it will <laughs> yes. be more fun. <laughs> exactly. Okay, thank so you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. Ciao.